<laughs> What's going on, everybody? Jared here. What is this? Episode seven? Rob, you know what you know what episode this is. What yeah, episode? that sounds about right. All right, we're gonna I'm we're doing this. So it's episode seven of movies and way more nonsense than movies. I have a special guest on this episode. He's definitely not in the he he's into movies, but he's not yeah. in the movie sphere of YouTube and I'm whatnot. Not but in the cultural click of uh, no, you're not doing of YouTube movie. Reviews. You're definitely not doing ending explained videos or reactions or ranking videos. But hey, for the right price, I will. Oh, believe me, we might get that on the Patreon or whatever. Yeah. But this is Rob. I don't know. Should I say your last name? It's up to you. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, this is Rob Meharry, good friend from high school, middle school, good guy. <laughs> Loves movies in town. We're just going to sit down. We're having a few drinks. We're talking everything, what movies and nonsense. Rob, yeah. welcome to the show, buddy. Yeah, I mean, uh, you and I have known each other for, what, since I, well, I moved <gasps> in when fourth grade. Back so, in the day. So I would have been 10. So Dude. that means we've known each other for going on 17, 18 well, years. Well, you were, you were the new, you were the cool new kid that, one, had an N64. That's true. And two, delicious hot chocolate. Because I remember going over true. and we played NBA Showtime every single day, and your mom would make us delicious hot chocolate. And uh, <laughs> don't forget that my dad bought one of those goal setter hoops because yes. uh, we played 21. And, Crank that uh, thing up. Knockout and about every other basketball game. It was literally just what? It was like an hour of basketball and then an hour of Super Smash Brothers pretty much every night for about, I don't know, five years. And I will say that I maybe won one game of 21, but I won every game of Super yeah, Smash Brothers. Yeah, that's true. Everyone Dude, hated you. Box, McLeod, that's he's true. the best player. That's very true. This. Yeah, I think it was what, me, you, Mike, Jack, uh, there's probably a few others I'm missing, but like that, I think us four was like... The core group. The of core like group, yeah. Basketball every because, day. Because we didn't have, we had uh, the last hour of the day yeah. off, so we would always go over to your place and just and smash we, it up. Well, and us four lived in town, so that helped too, because you know we live in one of those small towns where like half the kids in your class live in the country and have to ride a bus to school. So, yeah, um, I think that we finally got uh, non dial up internet in <laughs> 2014. I would say. Uh yeah, internet. Um. <laughs> that sounds about right. I, I don't. I mean, I think we got like some sort of high speed, but like, I'm sure if you tried it now by today's standards, it would be. You know, it, you're, it's you're, literally someone back there with a yeah. crank just be like, "Hurry up, the internet!" Blah, 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 blah. You're uh, but you're waiting an hour for Google to load so that you can you know search. Uh, just waiting for those nudies for cheat you know, codes. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, cheat codes. codes. That, yeah, yeah, we're not talking about nudes. This yeah. is this is the non nude free yeah, podcast. No, I, mean, I have no idea. But what no, that's, we. Maybe that's about. I. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. We haven't actually sat down and talked for more than probably five minutes in six years. I don't know. It's, it's been, been it's long. been a long time. I mean, so like we, I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll, here's some disclosure, and it's not the singer, but we went out and had what? A, I mean, I'm not saying we're drunk, but we had a couple of drinks. We sat down. We talked. We've talked for an hour already. So we're yeah. we're we're we might. I don't even know if we're gonna repeat stuff because again, six years worth of stuff. We could rep- we might record three episodes tonight. Who knows? We we, we could. But we could it could be like a regular a semi-regular i mean feature. Th- this is gonna be like a and reunion your, of sorts yeah and you have like your stock questions that you ask everybody right on every yeah i'm gonna time. i might just make these up on the fly because okay. i don't have my notebook here but i mean obviously like give a give a quick uh, do you have like who are you i guess what the viewers out um, there that obviously they they don't know you from the the movie reviews mm-hmm. and the movie sphere or you're trolling or you know telling people that uh, Shazam isn't a masterpiece or whatever. Like, what? I, what's I your have, claim to fame? I have no I opinion on Shazam because I haven't <laughs> seen it. So, I will. I will cop to that that I haven't trolled anybody about the movie mm-hmm. Shazam. Although it did look kind of goofy when I uh, saw Shaquille it. O'Neal is amazing in that movie. Wait, are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, Kazam. <laughs> when are they going to do like a Kazam Shazam mashup? They they, they, have to, they really right? should. They should cuz it I'm I'm pretty sure it's in the same universe. Yeah, like that I mean, you talk about branding opportunities. I mean, that that's just exactly. gold. Hell, right even get Sinbad right in there because I'm pretty sure yeah. he plays some genie that people are cuckoo kachu. What's that? Which scary Mint. movie is it where they make the joke when it's like Scary Movie Three. Oh, it's like, have you ever seen Shaq? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they're shooting the hoops at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Scary where, where, Movie Three. Is that the where he's in like the saw situation? Yeah, it's has him to, and Doctor Phil. Yeah, and then he has to make a free throw to get his foot uh, let free. And then he cuts. Uh, Doctor Phil cuts off his leg, and he's like, "Wrong foot." Oh, and yeah. then it, and then it cuts to the title screen. 
Yeah. In my opinion, that was probably the last great scary movie. Was the third one? Okay. Before we and, when, even, and we have a long history. Before with we those even get into too. that, because I've had a conversation with the SoCo guys about parody films and mm-hmm. uh, scary movies, and I would say we're we're the same age. They're a year and a half younger than my me, I believe. Mm-hmm. Which of okay, you said one, two, and three, and then it kind of just fell off there. Which one is your favorite out of those three? Because I I know where I sit. Okay. Um. I think I'm gonna go two. Two. Okay. See, I feel like two. I love three though, two. and I love one. See, that's the thing is one, two, and three. I think are so good. Three was the very first PG thirteen movie I ever saw in the theaters. But two, I felt like just worked so perfectly. Yeah. I just think of that scene at the beginning where they're sitting in the like the you know living room and listening to shake ass watch yourself <laughs> and then and, she pisses on the yeah. floor and is like oh she's good and then you know the classic like that's my strong hand and like oh uh, you know let's give you I a can do it myself that. that part I mean that that is one of the funniest sequences in any of the scary movies Which one? I think that that part in oh. where where you know at the very beginning where David Cross is in there and they're doing the like the uh you know, let's give him a hand. Yeah, or, yeah. Or the, <laughs> How about a standing ovation? And yeah. then and then he sits down and Ray's like, yeah. hey, best seat in the house. <laughs> Second best. <laughs> but the thing is, okay, Scary Movie 1, do you remember watching that at Mike Huseman's birthday and his yes. dad walked in when Ray was doing the 69? 24 yeah. <laughs> and 25. 69. Actually, <laughs> Kelly and I, my fiance Kelly, just rewatched that movie like, I don't know. Maybe Scary Movie 1? Yeah, two or three weeks ago and... I like was amazed by how much I was still laughing. I was like, "This is hilarious! This is I, still hilarious!" Like I, it stands up. I think that that is what imprinted. We we were like the perfect age because mm-hmm. that we were like we were teens, and it imprinted probably on the way we think things are funny. Oh yeah, the way we watch Absolutely. things, those jokes. I mean, because everyone growing up, you're obviously quoting movies and whatnot. But scary movie one, two, and three were literally probably the movies that we quoted the most. Like, we were talking when we were out to eat, but, like, comedy, you know, is kind of in a not a great place right now as far as comedy movies go. Like, feature comedy movies, there just aren't a lot of good ones that are being made right now. But I feel around that early aughts time, you know, when those came out and then when the so-called frat pack, you know, Will Ferrell, Owen Wilson, Luke Wilson, all yep. those guys, Ben Stiller came to be, like... And when Adam Sandler was kind of in his heyday of comedies, like... Well, that was... Th- was that late nineties for like Billy Madison, Happy yeah. Gilmore? That was like late nineties. That's and like then, my anti movie critic take. Is that like I love all those movies oh, and all the people who like are like, this is immature, stupid comedy. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I I just like go back and see the way that people look at those and they are so negative about all those movies and it's like, you know what? They're funny. Like they weren't out to change the world. They weren't out to send some. You know big inspiring message yeah. they were about to make like dumb like, teenagers they, laugh they didn't, like put in, they didn't put him in black and white and have like an inspirational yeah. message and great writing the thing is there's uh, believe me okay. and we were dumb teenagers and, so it was perfect it yes was, we, it was we, we hit on the perfect spot and again go almost going in this thing i review movies i am far from a qualified candidate r- critic at all i know what's a good movie but I also know what's a funny movie. And I think that that's what almost you're getting at is like, they're not g- critically. They're not good. They are not masterpieces. No. Like, I mean, how many, I don't know how many movies that you would say of the last 20 years are masterpieces. Like I can think of a few. Like, well, and let alone a masterpiece with a dick joke in it. Yeah. <laughs> Which one are you thinking? Of? I don't know, but oh. I hope someone can find, but one. I mean like there are masterpieces. Like uh, we were talking earlier, I think about like Paul Thomas Anderson, like, there will be blood is like a masterpiece of the last twenty years. Like Zodiac, uh, David Fincher yep. is a, a masterpiece of the last twenty years. Like No Country for Old Men, movies like that. Like well, the, well, you, it, I mean, it's who's behind the film, it's who's in the film. Mm-hmm. Da- fucking Daniel Day Lewis lived that part. He's oh a yeah, cuckoo like he's too. insane. Like, yeah. but he is probably the greatest actor of this generation. Probably one of the last right now. I mean, I until mean, the new. Yeah, I mean, there will be somebody in. new that'll take his place. But I mean, of this. Of this kind of passing generation, it's kind of like him and Denzel and a few others that are like, you know, these are the guys that we're going to remember in 50 years. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but like, those people make masterpieces. Like, no, Adam Sandler and Will Ferrell and 
you know, the Wilson brothers and Ben Stiller were not out to make the next the, Citizen Kane or 2001 me, yeah, or something. Yeah, they, they're definitely not there to change the world, especially, which I think is funny because we were talking about Joker. Mm-hmm. Todd Phillips did old school. Yeah. Who, well, who also says, I'm here for the gangbang? Yeah, Like, yeah, that is yeah. the guy who did Joker. Or, like, uh, the, the classic Luke Wilson speech where he's like, sometimes you think you've found true love, <laughs> and then you catch the red eye fly home from San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and you know where it goes and, from there. Which, and which, then the Dan Band that, that introduced us yes, to the Dan Band, which yes. another oh you know God. lasting contribution to American culture, right there. Well, I think it's so funny because I think okay, comedy, hilarious, fun. You're laughing, you're having a good time, smiling. It, 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 it's something that you're really enjoying. But also, I like how directors, because Todd Phillips, for example, um, comedy did Joker fucking dark movie yeah i like how those are so closely related because Mm -hmm. personally for myself i don't know because you're a funny guy do you think that humor does come from uh, having a darkness in you not like you're gonna go murder someone but like a very i don't know depression certain things in life and like just downfalls helps you be funnier i mean to me, the funniest comedy is always like people making fun of themselves. Like, yeah, being self-deprecating. Self- yeah, self-deprecation. Like, like I like people who are kind of ironically egomaniacs. Like they, you know, play these blowhard characters. Like we were talking about, you know, Stephen Colbert in the early yep. days of the Colbert Report earlier, yep. and like that's funny. Like that, the whole like I'm playing a blowhard, but like people who are legitimate, you just like egomaniac blowhards. Like that, I don't know how you can be funny and and be that obsessed with yourself and like convinced that you're infallible and you can't do anything wrong because I feel like yeah the most of my favorite comedy and the best comedy comes from like the place where you're making fun of yourself you're making fun of you know some th- something that you've done in your life some situation that mm-hmm. you've gotten yourself into mm-hmm. or some misfortune that you've had you know well that's the thing is like you I, I hate it but you you have to look at the humor in life because it fucking sucks. Believe me, if you have nothing but bad thing after bad thing after bad thing happen to you and you don't have to just step back and laugh about it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's this big long story. I could get into it later. But an old guy stole a pizza of mine once. (laughs) I have to laugh about that. that Where at? At Domino's. It's a stupid, it's just a bad, like I had a bad day at work. I had a, it was a bad long day and some (laughs) old guy stole a pizza from me. Well, dude, didn't you get pizza insurance? No, see, they didn't have, they didn't have pizza insurance. I'm pretty sure I I made a whole fuss about it, but the guy. They should have got Obama on there to say. Yeah, thanks Obama. If if you like your pizza insurance, (laughs) you can keep your pizza insurance. (laughs) What is Obama, like Italian Yeah, yeah. I kind of did like hey, Obama and, and Bernie Sanders like mixed together there, but you know, you know what I was getting at. So. No, no, I like that. I like um, that. But no, I was gonna say, like, uh, I was gonna go off of what we were talking about and ask you how much of the sort of backlash and hysteria over the Joker movie that we kind of were poo pooing earlier, like Pim-pim. we were poo pooing the the backlash and the and the sort of hand wringing over it, not the movie itself. Yeah. But how much of that do you think? came from the fact that, you know, Todd Phillips is this guy who basically made frat boy comedies and, you know, is not what you would consider a woke director by any stretch of anyone's imagination. What are you talking about? Uh, So, like, how much of the hysteria do you think was just, like, personal vitriol towards him? I mean, honestly, I think it was quite a bit. It was the thing that he's doing something different and then the the reason, okay, this is coming out a week after whenever, I don't know, but... The reason it made so much goddamn money is because we talked about this. The 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 media mm-hmm. put it in this light that it was just, like, this horrible movie. It's gonna cause mm-hmm. all these people to go out and shoot up these theaters. You know, yeah. oh, don't go out to the theater. Don't <laughs> uh, don't fucking go to this yeah. movie. And I mean, I went to this opening night. I don't. You probably went a couple weeks I went later. About a week after. And there was no cops at yours, right? No. I went to it. There was one or two cops. I went to a smaller theater. I thought it was ridiculous. But going back to Todd Phillips, it's just when someone keeps just I think he was just just tired of it all when he was saying those mm-hmm. comments because like anything can be exhausting. funny. Yeah, it everything can be funny, dark stuff, mm-hmm. light stuff, and I think he was just in this moment of just like I don't uh, fuck this. I'm going to say this thing and I don't even know what the original <laughs> question is. I, I, just that like, <laughs> you know, sus- there was obviously a whole lot of of 
like I said, freak out over this movie and the whole, you know, it's going to cause violence and incels and all that. Yeah. And all that junk. But junk. I think a lot of it was maybe sort of personally directed at Todd Phillips because, like, for example, because the movie is so influenced by his movies, like, if Scorsese directed the movie, like, would people say that, would yeah. people be this upset about it or if, I don't know. You know who is another big mainstream director right now? Like if if Ryan Coogler, who did Black <laughs> Panther, like did the Joker, would would uh, would there be this hysteria over it? I don't know. I mean, yeah. I feel like because Todd Phillips has kind of uh, purposely positioned himself as sort of an anti woke director. Yeah, that maybe that fed into how much people hated, or not not people not people hated the movie, but how much critics sort of disliked it or. I wouldn't Not say even disliked, disliked but it. They just kind of had to make this it, this big moral panic. You yeah, know? it yeah. was like, I mean, I can't think of the last movie. Oh shit, sorry. <laughs> I can't think of the last movie that came out, and maybe you can think of it. But like, what was the last movie that before it was released was this controversial? Oh god, uh, I'd have to I'd have to really look at a list, but I want to. I say... mean, there was some shit over uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, and but. That was the which I don't understand that at all because they were complaining about the violence of it all. But literally a month prior, John Wick killed about three hundred and twelve <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah. With, yeah, with a book like it, 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 it's this weird thing where a headline or a, a reporter or anyone is gonna latch onto something and then they're gonna blow it out of proportion. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is gonna gangbang, not gangbang, but. <laughs> Pile, yeah. pile on. You're, you're in Todd Phillips' mindset right now, so that's that's that was like a Freudian slip yeah. right there. Yeah, they're gonna pile on and almost get the clicks and whatnot. But going back to the whole Todd Phillips thing, I think it was almost a thing because looking at his past career of stuff, he doesn't have anything that really stands out. He did the Hangover trilogy, mm-hmm. which I would say Hangover One really hit it again. I don't think I even watched two and three. I mean, oh, don't do. I was gonna say don't. I've been, always been told not because to. I think we went to the theater for one because that did. hit it at the perfect time because again that yeah. hit at this weird red, like super comedy yes yeah, super bad frame, area, yeah. um, and then he had that which is pretty good and then two and three which was downfall mm-hmm. and I think it was the thing where he almost had something to prove and all of these people had almost doubts because he did old school too right? yes yeah but well, yeah, old we school was what two thousand four yeah I that think. was before yeah. Um, he Starsky and Hutch as well. He did. I, I like I that love, movie. Hey, I, I vouch hey, for that hey, movie. Bacardi, yeah. and Cola. Bacardi and Cola. Do it. Do it. Hey, do I, it. I, I I think that movie's very. Now funny. hear me here. We do this, but with two dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I love that You're movie. Tired. Yeah. I love that movie. Yep. I, you know what, Todd Phillips? I love all of those comedies. Honestly, and, stuff. and I will be probably in the minority on this take, but I think. Uh, War Dogs was more interesting than I got credit for. I didn't. Well, was he? The, I didn't hate that movie. Was he the director yeah. of that? I I remember going. I didn't to that. love it. I but I didn't hate it. I didn't love it either. And you know what? I'm gonna agree with you. I didn't. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I thought it was a well made film. It was mm-hmm. because it's based on a true story, right? Yeah. yeah it was very interesting. Uh, uh what's his name? Uh, not uh, Jonah Hill. Yeah. He's pretty crazy in yeah. a few scenes. I mean, it's like a crazy story of you know sort of international arms dealing and espionage and all and that greed. Stuff. And greed, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't the perfect person to direct that movie. You know, maybe they should have had Oliver Stone do it or something. Yeah, but, I uh, feel like that would have been more but, catered towards his... Yeah, but but it, I don't know. I, I didn't hate that movie. I thought it was, like I said, it, 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 was, it was a step in a different direction for him. Maybe it was a, a step towards what he did, you know, this year. See, that's the thing is, like, it was almost, yeah, it could have easily been like, hey, I'm going to try this out try a little bit of more flavor i'm gonna put a little bit mm-hmm. of humor in here and tackle a more serious uh story property or whatever and whatnot but i think that i mean we we've seen it with actors um going from very comedic roles into these dramatic roles very smoothly and like almost knocking into out of the park mm-hmm. like for example jim carrey doing yeah. uh truman show is Eh, I would say that that's more comedy than like a serious yeah. thing. But sunshine is it sunshine? Eternal or, sunshine. In, in, Eternal sunshine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like boom, knocks that out of the park. And then there's other comedians. Uh, Robin for, Williams has done. Um, oh my god, yes. 
He did. Uh, he did that Christopher Nolan movie, the early one, uh, Insomnia with Al Pacino. Yep, that's a pretty good one. Uh, uh, he also did that one hour photo that I've never seen, but that looks bonker. I've heard okay, it's very dark. Okay. Um, he's played a few other like darker roles. I think. Oh, mean, yeah. R.I.P. But uh, yeah, yeah, not doing you know. But uh, he did some. He did some interesting work too. I mean, like Richard Pryor has done serious roles. He was in it like a David Lynch movie. In the well, 90s. we were talking earlier, uh, Uncut Gems. A, yeah, and Uncut Gems. That yeah. I've seen that coming up. Uh, if you ever want an old deep cut, watch uh, Richard Pryor in Blue Collar with uh, Never Harvey Keitel and uh, Yafit Kato. Who, <laughs> what? Who, who, you, you probably don't know the name, but he's the guy. He's an alien. Um, he's one of the guys in Alien. Uh, he's one, one that probably rips out of his chest. I don't think it's him, but oh. he, I know he's in that movie. He's in Midnight Run from the '80s, which is okay. like a uh, Robert De Niro like kind of chase buddy movie. Do they do a run at midnight? Yeah, okay. yeah. So he's in like some really sort of classic movies that you wouldn't think of, and he's this great actor who, <laughs> you know, is kind of forgotten now. But but yeah. he's one to check out too. But yeah, I mean, comedians have a long history of kind of. Switching gears, I mean, like and, prior to and, that, and doing a very. Has Eddie Murphy ever done a really serious movie? Oh God, I don't know. Though he just he just came out with Dolomite yeah. as my name, which I would say more is is comedy driven than mm-hmm. serious. They they tackle serious uh, situations. I don't. I don't. I'd have to look back okay. to see this stuff. Maybe that one where he, the one complete flop. It was it wasn't serious, but it was a it was a joke movie where which he one? like something moon. He goes to the moon. Oh, Nash something. Oh, Kevin, no, not Kevin Nash. Fuck, I, people are gonna correct me. Okay. They know what Somebody movie it is, know. but no. What I'm getting at is not only are actors and actresses doing that, but I feel like directors are sort of doing that now too, mm-hmm. where they're doing this stuff that's either lighter toned and more comedic and whatnot. But then they're like, boom, they're gonna do something that's darker, more serious, and completely knock out of the park. Yeah. Well, because I think most of them probably at the end of the day they don't want to be pigeonholed you know they don't want to well, be yeah. like you are this you are this typecast of an actor or a director like you only make this kind of movie so everyone wants to you know branch out and try something completely different like i saw like i don't know if you saw this but ray romano is going to be in the irishman he's going to be one of the i can see that yeah he's going to be I one of the lawyers that. in the irishman and like you know, everyone knows him from Everyone Loves Raymond. But oh, like, yeah. I think he's a pretty good actor. Well, and if I, you didn't see, I think, I don't know if it was this year or the end of last year. It was a Netflix movie called Paddleton. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that no, with him? It. It's Ray Romano and then, oh, God, Steve whatever from uh, The League. Oh. I don't know what his last name is. I can picture him. Yeah. Anyways, it's literally a very small contained story about two really good friends and one of them has cancer. Mm-hmm. And it... That movie brought me to tears. Like yeah. Ray Romano is really good in that movie, and I, I mean, I'm very. I haven't watched a trailer for The Irishman mm-hmm. or anything, so now that I know that Ray Romano's in it, it won't be a yeah. shock. But I'm very excited for that movie. And uh, Anna, I don't know, if you say Paquin or Paquin, Paquin, the girl from True Blood, isn't it too? The Anna Paquin. Yeah, that's, that, that's I don't know who that is. She's blonde. She's the main character in True Blood. Which I've only oh the seen one with like the gap in the teeth. Yeah. I'm not sorry about that. No, yeah. <laughs> no that's Storm. That's, that's what I'm Wait, talking about. no, no, no. Rogue. She was Rogue in the old X Men movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So and and another. I mean, to kind of go off of that, like Tarantino, who we you know we both have obviously said that we love, is kind of notorious and famous for you know casting actors against type, uh, bringing back actors who are basically out of the game. Yeah. I mean, he pretty much single handedly revived Travolta's career. I mean, and he brought back Pam Greer for Jackie Brown and, and uh, Robert Forster, who just passed away. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's kind of known for doing that, too, of taking actors who, like, you would never, like, oh. Would you, would you say it's almost risk-taking? Like, it's it's a yeah, risk because, to I mean, these people in. if it flops, like, then you look like an idiot. And, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think in his recent movies if he's, you know, cast somebody really against type. But, but he, you know, with those early ones, like, he really took a chance and kind of brought some actors back from the brink, and like, I think you know Travolta, for example, is probably very happy that 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 movie came out because it pretty much he's still acting twenty five oh, yeah. years later. Even though I heard his last one was terrible. What are you talking about the fanatic? I haven't seen. I, that I one, haven't seen I, it either. I also I heard, heard Gotti was god awful. I haven't seen that one either. I haven't. 
those are two movies that I the reason I skipped on Gotti is because obviously it had horrible reviews, mm-hmm. but also I was in this weird predicament with uh, Movie Pass because I was a patron of Movie Pass, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't allow me to see movies because they they were. Uh, they went under, you know. Don't did, don't invest in a company you think is gonna do well because it did not well end well for the amount of money I put. Isn't into that like it. that company that like gave everybody coupons for food and like they just the, well, movie pass? No, there was another company like that that gave because oh, movie really? pass did something similar. Like they just gave these people movie passes and they're like, oh, well, how are we gonna make money? And it's like, oh, we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, don't worry like, about eh, it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It's too good to be true. Basically, they were selling all of our information to people. Which is pretty much the U.S. economy at large right now. It's just like overvalue a company by $100 billion, uh, dump a ton of venture capital into it, and then just hope that it'll eventually make a profit. Uh, I mean, if those companies have an IPO, invest, and then sell the next day. That, yeah. I mean, that's that's my two cents of financial wisdom right there for you um, guys. Everything I know about investing comes from the Wolf of Wall Street and Big Short. So, <laughs> um, Okay, here, listen to me penny stocks uh, follow me here I, 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 pink sheets I, I, and penny stocks I, i've heard right? about this tell me more do you by chance work for stratton oakmont who stratton oakmont oh, i don't know who you're talking about uh, no i would never uh, jordan belfort he started the company uh, steve madden uh yeah 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 <laughs> steve madden mm. i like he was he, he's barely in the movie oh, but that's I love, like a very that's like role. that was like the reconnaissance when it first started like when he was first coming back and then they put him in there, and he just does his weird ass dude thing that he always does, and just the. Was that before or after Magic Mike? That was definitely after, right? <sighs> they were both around the same time. That was both like 2012, 2013, and then he did Dallas Buyers Club yep. around that time too. And he also did a movie called Mud. I don't know if you've ever seen yep. that one. I really like that movie. I I heard because I saw you give it a positive review earlier this year. That Peanut Butter Falcon movie Ooh. was kind of. A similar t- thematically type of movie because it's kind of like a, a Huck Finn style, you know, journey down the river type thing. Yeah. Have you seen Peter Butter Falcon? No, I haven't. But I, I don't know yet if it'll spoiler will end in my top ten. But it is a movie that has a lot of heart. It's really mm-hmm. it's a risk because I don't know if you know the story behind the directors. Basically, these guys, um, I think they went to film school. They were doing lower budget stuff, and the main guy, the guy with Down syndrome. They took a risk on him because they put him as one of the lead roles, and I think it was because they promised him they would when they make a movie they'd put him in the lead role, and yeah. they were living in their fucking car while shooting this movie, and it paid yeah. off. I mean, yeah. it's not a huge box office success, but for such an independent film, for them to risk it all, live in their car, get Shia LaBeouf somehow, because yeah. d- I mean, that was another so thing good. is, I think it was oh god, I'm gonna get this wrong. I think. It it was it wasn't Christian Bale, it was some actor on Twitter that said I want to make things, I want to make dreams come true this year. Mm-hmm. They messaged him, and he backed the film. Wow, and that's how this film got made. So like, li- if you're out there, you want to dream, to- <laughs> that's a yeah, pretty awesome dream, story. Dreams right can there. come true, but yeah. yeah, I love you should definitely check that film out because it was it was very inspiring and it's you, it's smaller like indie-esque mm-hmm. with a certain you know messages here or there and did you like mud uh spoiler i never saw it <laughs> I, I, I like i like how you're okay. going off and i was like no uh, I, I no that's fine like there's a bunch of movies is we it, talk about is that, it, like, one of us is has it seen huck one finn type kind of that type of story and also uh ty sheridan who was mm. the lead in ready player one that yep. was like one of his first roles he kind of is the main sort of huck type character okay. in the movie and uh, McConaughey plays this guy on the run. And Reese Witherspoon also makes an appearance. It's actually one of her best performances. So I am a big fan of that director, Jeff Nichols. Uh, if you get a chance, Jeff check him out. Nichols. And Michael Shannon is in almost all of his movies. And he makes an appearance too. And he's one Dude, of my favorite actors. Have you so, ever, speaking of Michael Shannon, have you ever seen The, La- the Night Before? Or whatever. I think that's what it's called. The night before, it's a comedy with Seth Rogen. Uh, God, no, what's his name? Yet, but... uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, okay. it's like from 2015, maybe. Okay. It's a good... Michael Shannon, small part, one of the best parts of the whole okay. goddamn movie. He is like, <sighs> we were talking about Daniel Day Lewis earlier, yeah. and how like you know, well, at, he transforms of that generation. Like he's probably to use sports terminology, he's what you'd call the goat. You know, yeah, yeah, or he's right up there. I think Shannon. If he keeps like if he keeps playing the right roles, like 
he could be a contender for that. Like, almost a lifetime achievement type thing? Well, just that, like, I think he could be the one that people look back and they're like, like, this guy was, like, the consummate actor of this generation. I mean, I, I mean, another one that sucks, but, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away. Yeah. I think he was... He was definitely in that conversation, uh, too. Well, you know what? I was watching a movie. For some reason, T-Buck loves watching this movie, Twister. Fucking oh, yeah, Phil- of course. Philip Seymour Hoffman's in that as a crazy, just well, side character. And you know the He's- last season is, the last scene of that is filmed, like, up in, in Iowa, not far from where I live. Really? Actually. Yeah. I So that tornado was that the CG? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Paxton, another R.I.P. Oh, to a yeah. real one, man. Yeah. Which I watched uh, Terminator the other day, and yeah. he was in that. Aliens, he was he was yeah. great in Aliens. Um, he, Which that line, he's like, "Game over, man." That was completely improv, I believe. Yeah, dude. I mean, he's another one. Like he he never really got his due. There's another movie if you if you want a good Bill Paxton movie. Have you seen A Simple Plan? It's kind of like a is that is that the band? No, not, not the emo <laughs> band that. Uh, you know, we cried too in yeah. seventh grade, but yeah. no, there's this, it's a late nineties movie. A Dr- simple plan. Yeah. It's kind of, it, it will remind you a lot of Fargo, like, uh, you know, okay. which is one of my favorite movies. I love Fargo. So, so that to me was a selling point, but he actually has a lead role in that. And Billy Bob Thornton, it's like him and Billy Bob are the two leads and it's about like a, sh- uh, a plane crashes and there's a bunch of money in it and and they, you know, kind of stumble upon it. Yeah. It's, which is, you know, kind of a classic film, film trope yeah, there. Yeah, cliffhanger. But, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> and as you may guess, after that, everything kind of goes haywire. Yeah. And. What year was this? Uh, like late 90s? 90s. Late yeah. 90s. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a good movie. A simple plan. Uh, I think Sam Raimi directed it. Like, he directed, what did he direct? He's directed a lot of. Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Evil Dead remake. Evil Dead, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's, that's him. Stuff like that. For so. some reason, when you said A Simple Plan, I think of that movie that came out like two years ago, A Simple Favor with Blake Lively. No, I haven't seen that Whatever, one. yeah, don't, don't worry about that. We won't, <laughs> we won't go down that. Okay. It, it was, yeah, it was weird. Um, I don't even know where we're at, man. What do you, you know, know what, you know what, how about this? I wasn't into movies when we were hanging out, you know, doing our thing, you know, driving around, drinking while listening to Third Eye Blind. We both weren't into movies. And I feel like you recently have gotten into movies in like the last what three four years. Yeah, it kind of started after college, to be honest. Yeah. Like I saw, I, I mean, I would see a few movies before. Like I think I went to like the Dark Knight in theaters because we really went to the Dark Knight. <laughs> did we? Hey. Did we go to that together? Because I feel like I, don't, I don't. I don't think we went to the Dark okay. Knight. I remember going to Spider Man Three in Storm or where we grew up. <laughs> Uh, no one's gonna fucking know where that's at. Yeah, I don't know even yeah, why no, I stopped. Hey, fucking middle oh. Iowa where we yeah. grow potatoes because you don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember going to that and we had to sit in, or a few of us had to sit in the aisle because yeah. that, they oversold the theater. So like I went to, yeah, I would say I was definitely a casual movie fan for, yeah. for just like if you saw something on TV, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't seek out anything, would you? Or like my dad, <laughs> this is a funny story, my, when I was what 14 or 15 or something my dad and my my parents both of them are like they're just not they don't watch dark stuff they're not you know they don't watch violence or swearing or any of that yeah, stuff when you tell your when you mention your parents all i think of the is beer fest sunshine story. lollipop su- wait what's the beer fest story when we went to iowa city to watch that to when we were seniors in high school oh. my dad made us shut the movie off I, re- I remember the time where we were going to the basketball tournament watching Harold and Kumar in the oh, backseat. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. So anyways, like, they were not, they just weren't, that's not their kind of movies. And yeah. my dad somehow rented The Departed when I was, oh, like, wow. 14 or 15. And he started watching The new it. one, right? Like, the 2006. Okay, okay. You know. I didn't know if, it, because that's a remake. Obviously. Well, it's a remake of Infernal Affairs, which okay, is a, a okay. Chinese movie. Touche, touche. Yeah. Um, but so he rented the Departed and the Departed. The Departed. Uh, yeah, I should yeah, say. Oh, that, that was at the time when Boston cinema was really on the way oh, up. Oh, it was like, like in the town. The came town. Out, uh, uh, Gone uh, Baby Gone yep. came out oh, at that it time. Was, that was the Bostonicence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the Bostonicence. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, Mark Wahlberg's uh, movie about the the bombing. I think or we found a transformer here. The, yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> he rented The Departed and started watching it, and was obviously just appalled by it because. Oh know, really? Oh yeah. I mean, I thought that that would be up his alley. No, my dad, like he is a he he loves to read. Like he's a big reader, reads a lot of novels and yeah. fiction, which I do too. But uh, he is just not a 
he doesn't have the stomach for violence or swearing or sex in movies. So that movie started and, you know, it has a, a good combination of all three of those things. And he's just like, I, I got to turn this off. I can't watch this anymore. And I remember kind of being glued to it because I was like, this is, this is actually a good movie. Like, I've never seen a what, movie like this before. How far did you get in? I don't know. I mean, I've rewatched that yeah. movie at least three or four times since then. But the first time, I don't know. I don't know if I finished. I didn't get to the yeah, infamous rat scene. Believe me, the usually end. the first couple times I never finished yeah, either. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, which is funny now because, like, on the internet, the, yeah, the, the whole rat yeah, sequence took, at the yeah. end is like super controversial. Which I never understood why it was such a controversial thing. But someone, I saw that thing where they re edited it yeah. and they took it out. It's just like, I mean. Is that, in retrospect, like, of all the movies Scorsese's ever made, is that his best movie? No. But it is the one that won in Best Picture, finally. And it is still a very enjoyable movie. Like, Oh, I remember that was, like, literally an ongoing, every single day, ne- uh, not Netflix, uh, FX would oh, play yeah. that. Every day I'd come home from college, like, class between breaks, I'd just turn it on. And that was one of those movies. There's so many movies that it's, like, I've seen the whole movie, but, like, <laughs> not ever in one setting. Yeah. And that's one of them where I've seen every single scene, but never at once. So movies like that kind of got me, it kind of, like, kind you know, almost got, would, got me warmed up a would, bit. would you almost say it's not, like, the, like, fantastic filmmaking, blah, blah, blah. It's almost, like, gangster-esque. Because I feel like you kind of went down a Scorsese hole after that. Oh, yeah. Def- well, that came later, but I I'm, I mean, he's definitely one of my favorite directors by, you know, with, without any doubt. Yeah. I'm a big Coen Brothers fan, too. I love them. Um, but, yeah, so it really didn't happen for me until, I don't know, late co- later college. I think later college I saw, like, and to go off the Coen Brothers thing, I finally saw Fargo for the first time. Yep. And I saw The Big Lebowski for the first time, which... Is still one of my favorite comedies of all time. I have a feeling that we both probably watched those close to the same time. I mean, not together, mm-hmm. but I didn't watch either of those until later college as well. Yeah. Because I remember people talking about The Big Lebowski. Oh, you gotta see this movie. Dude. You gotta see this movie. And I did, and I was like, oh, okay. I get I, it. I love I that get movie. It. That's probably my most rewatched of I'm all I'm probably time. not as high on no, I, yeah, as you, probably but, not, no, but that, like, it makes... For knowing you, it makes sense. That was just one of those that, for whatever reason, like, it was on my wavelength and, like, connected perfectly. And, like, every line is hilarious. And, like, you know, Jeff Bridges is in it. Like, Philip Seymour Hoffman makes the small role, but he's in it. Like, I mean, John Goodman, one of the funniest performances of all time. Yeah, Steve Buscemi. I mean, uh, John Turturro, too, as the Jesus. I mean, so those were the ones that really, like, kind of got me interested. Like, oh, like, you know, there's this whole world of movies out there and, like, you know, the Coen brothers, for example, have directed like 18 movies Yeah, and like, maybe I should go back and watch some more of them. And then I think, you know, this is probably a common thing, but after you get out of college and you're living on your own <laughs> and you're looking for something to do with your time, like <laughs> mine, I mean, you might start a YouTube channel. Yeah, you, might, you might start a YouTube <laughs> channel, you know, you might turn to drugs or an alcohol you might uh you might do all of this you might join a bowling league uh you with with the jesus and walter and uh the dude yeah or you might you know kind of be shut in and and read a lot and uh, watch a lot of movies and so that was kind of where it really i kind of turned a corner there started to watch more i mean even then i didn't like get to like the full-on where I am now of, like, I try to watch, like, I don't know, almost four or five movies a week. You do? Yeah. Fuck. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's almost... Yeah. That might be more than I watch. Yeah. I mean, I don't, like, go for every new release yeah. or anything, but, like... I'm just, watching a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's the part that if I was in well, your you're, shoes... Well, you're almost doing catch-up. Yeah, that's what I feel like. It's like, I am doing catch-up because I did not... I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but, like... it's And it's not this bad. My story is not this bad, but do you know who Paul Schrader is? The... He directed uh, First Reformed. He's directed like a couple from a couple of years ago. He directed like American Gigolo. Uh, American Gigolo. Yeah, with Richard Gere. Oh, I thought uh, you were talking about the Deuce. Oh no, no, not Deuce. Bigelow. <laughs> um, but he directed like he wrote the screenplay for uh, Taxi Driver. Wait, also. what happened to him? What's the story? Okay, so he grew up in Michigan, in rural Michigan, and yeah, he was like yeah. in a strict Calvinist family. Yeah. And his parents never let him watch a movie, and he didn't watch a movie until he was eighteen years old, and he like became this you know screenwriter filmmaker and extraordinaire and like and it's just so it wasn't like that but i kind of thought of it that way it's like i didn't it's not like i i avoided movies altogether growing up but i definitely didn't get the exposure to them that like even you probably did because 
uh, I mean, I, I almost fell into it the same as you is like, I don't think I loved entertainment of any sort on TV and stuff. I didn't have cable until I was in mm-hmm. high school. I didn't go. I was talking to my parents today. I didn't go to the theater more than probably five times in high school. Like, I, I think I'm kind of like you. I wasn't deprived, like you're saying, but it was one of those things where, hey, it's readily available now. Mm-hmm. You do your shit. And it, it, believe me, we could. We, I'm sure we could have yeah. easily turned to worse things. Well, and I'm probably more of a sports fan than you are, so I watched a lot of sports. Yeah. Like, I was pretty obsessed with Sports Center and all that for a long time, and, you know, I still follow sports, not probably to the extent that I used to. Yeah. But, uh, so that was another thing, was just that that was what I preferred. And then, you know, kind of prestige TV came along, too. Prestige yeah, worldwide. Yeah, prestige wide, worldwide. Wide. But, uh, so, you know, some of those shows I got into, like, we've talked about Breaking Bad and how we kind yeah. of both... That came along at the right time. And right we time, kinda, right place, yeah. yeah. Because I think, like you said, we were, I wouldn't say we were deprived, but it was like we were looking for mm-hmm. this uh, outlet of sorts. And that was another one that kind of like opened me up to like really the sort of gritty storytelling and like, you know. Oh, like how good crime storytelling can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so from there, yeah, I kind of started to seek out like, because I, yeah, like you've said, I kind of, I, I gravitate towards like the crime genre, although... I have been watching a lot of horror because it's October naturally. Yeah, but yeah, well, uh, you have to. But you know, I definitely gravitate towards the crime films and like, this is a random one, but like I remember, I think it was when I first got Netflix, which was around 2013 when I got out of college. You're really dating yourself there. I know. <laughs> well, I think it was because like in college, you know, I had roommates and like one of them had it, so I never the had thing it. Thing is, uh, yeah, yeah. But I watched like, uh, this is a real deep cut or like an old school cut, but I watched Cool Hand Luke. With Paul Newman. Okay, I've uh, heard of it. Never watched. Yeah, it. Yeah, I watched that, and then I watched Badlands, by which was uh, was that the TV show? No, this is actually a movie. Oh. there is a TV okay. show called okay. Into the Badlands, but no, I watched the okay. movie Badlands, which was directed by uh, Terrence Malick, and it starred a very young Martin Sheen, and it, like he was like twenty one or, tw- or no, he was like maybe thirty, but he okay. was he was still young at yeah. the time, and it was kind of uh, based on. The story of Charlie Starkweather, who was this, uh, ma- I don't know if you call him mass killer, mass shooter in Nebraska in the 1950s, which is a story my dad had told me about because my dad's from you know Western Iowa, southwestern Iowa, yeah. not that far from Nebraska. Mm-hmm. So I watched that movie, and that really like was a beautiful movie. I thought, and like just really opened my eyes of like, wow, like this movies can be really cool, you know. And oh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, the girl who plays Carrie is also is plays his girlfriend in the movie. Uh, what's her name? Carrie who? Carrie from the movie Carrie. Uh, oh, the horror movie. The old one. I, I uh, sh- tell you. oh, Sissy Spacek. That's her okay. Name. Yeah, we'll yeah. go with it. <laughs> no, Sissy Spacek plays his girlfriend, and you've seen her. She's in a million things. If yeah. you look up a picture of her, you'll know who she is. But anyways, so that one opened my eyes. Was like, wow, like you know, movies can be really cool. Like, there's all these crazy stories out there. Like. You don't have to limit yourself to movies that have just come out in the last 10 years. Oh, yeah. Like, you can watch movies that came out in the 60s, the 80s, the 2000s, or the 50s, you know, the 40s, whatever. Like, what? I think that's the almost a, a, a huge positive for Netflix is because before mm-hmm. then, I would say that we had to go to the movie uh, mm-hmm. rental place. Mm-hmm. And you almost ran a risk of renting. Like, Netflix, you can turn some on. 20 minutes in, you're like, fuck this. Um, back then it was different. And I think that that's also a thing where you, you just said it, you went to, you watched a movie, it probably curated its, uh, recommendations towards that. Mm -hmm. And then you kept watching that and that and that and that. And that's such a weird, but positive thing to talk over a toilet being flushed. (laughs) (laughs) And then, oh, I think I saw... The you know the classic uh, Woodward Bernstein movie, all the presidents men around that time too. And as a like a journalist, you know that's yeah. like kind of the the movie that you watch. And you're like the, the news, man. The news, the, news. the news has never been this the good. Goddamn news. <laughs> and so I don't know. There were just movies from the '70s that I watched around that time and kind of really got me interested. Yeah. And then you know I like I said I watched. That movie Mud was one that I really enjoyed. I don't know why so that one connected. Is it almost a thing where you're on you're 
I wouldn't say, you're not hooked on a specific genre that you're sticking to, but almost no. like you started in like this uh, like grittier kind mm-hmm. of 70s and then it worked your way outward and mm-hmm. have is that almost like your your comfort fruit almost kind food of for yeah viewing? but like I mean you can definitely watch those movies and then see connections to like David Fincher for example like I mean yeah. Zodiac is a I mean and I think you talked about it on one of your past podcasts oh, about Zodiac. how much you love Zodiac and how like that's just one of those movies that you have to see. It's a long one, but I love yeah. it. Yeah. And like that's that, there's a lot of I mean you see a lot of kind of the structure that came from those 70s movies and kind of in play mm-hmm. in Zodiac. And you know, I'm sure there's other directors where you can make that connection. I mean, I'm sure Tarantino, you know, he's seen every movie that's ever been made. Oh, probably. So you know, then you kind of connect that to the present and some of the recent movies that are coming out. I mean, even like Black Klansman kind of had like that '70s vibe to it because mm-hmm. it was a story that took place in the '60s and '70s. And I mean, I don't know what your opinion was. I like that movie. Spoiler: I didn't see it yet. You never saw? I didn't have time to. Okay, I know uh, that was like one of the only Best Picture nominees last year I actually liked. So yeah, uh, you're talking. To me, you're saying the Green Book didn't solve racism? <sighs> yeah, Green Book. <laughs> It wasn't it, like it wasn't atrocious. Like it, some people made it out to it be the worst. It was the safe choice. Yeah, some people made it out to be the worst movie ever made, yeah. and it wasn't the worst movie ever made. It was just a very corny movie. I that thought was it was like, a very heartwarming by the numbers yeah. movie. It's kind of like Forrest Gump. Like Forrest yep. Gump is designed to make baby boomers cry. Like yeah. that, that yep. when they were looking like, hmm, what should we? What's the goal for this movie? Yep. Make like you know baby boomer Vietnam era people sentimental and cry and that's Mm -hmm. kind of what green book does the same thing but instead of about vietnam and you know that history it's more about civil rights and that history and kind of presenting a very sugary kind of almost vibe on something that was the furthest away from that it could ever be yeah now you're talking about almost these these movies that are i would say that they're almost uh i wouldn't say award worthy but they're very highly regarded yeah prestige movies what are like movies that you've come across later on that you know aren't good movies but you absolutely love well one that i think we talked about because i remember that one of your past guests said this movie sucked uh, i thought the beach bum was hilarious like i watched yeah. that that came out on hulu a couple months ago still, and still haven't seen it so i have uh, no input that here. that movie i don't know it's just it, it's you know with the connection to spring breakers too like i just thought it was really funny and really sort of like kind of the message we need almost in this moment of like just just go fuck with it, it man, man. Yeah, like just like just it. just fuck it like so that would be one i mean so i'm assuming you're a fan of was it 2013 spring breakers or was that early yeah it was around that time. okay were you a fan of that movie oh yeah i like that movie was it because there was young under not underage women but i just think <laughs> like scantily clad ladies james franco's like that is He's probably crazy. that is probably his career best performance. Like, did you ever see the uh, the Disaster Artist? Yeah, I did okay. see that, and I, that was okay. I mean, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate I it. I did not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like that was okay, but it, that one just I don't know. It felt a little too like inside Hollywood, you know? Yeah, like yeah. we're gonna make fun of this movie that everyone's already made fun of. Yeah. But uh, so I didn't, I didn't. I that was kind of lukewarm on that one, but but I don't know. I still think that Spring Breakers might be like his career best performance, and like. James Franco's a really interesting guy. Like, I know there's some kind of weird stories about him, and he's not... Cons- Do tell. Well, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. We all know. But, uh, and I think, I haven't watched too much of it, but I think he's been pretty good on that HBO show, The Deuce. Yeah, I've heard that's, that's yeah. very good. Um, But he actually, like, weirdly has, like, a, a, an obsession with old books. Like, he's... And he's actually directed adaptations of, like, William Faulkner and John Steinbeck and stuff. Oh, wow. So he, I mean, he he definitely tries, and, like, he wants to be, like, this deeper kind of rather know, than what he this deep thinker yeah. and and this sort of auteur and all that you know the favorite move the favorite word of uh of, of film people everywhere the auteur who's, the an, auteur. who's an auteur but but auteur. i don't know i just think there's something about him in that movie like and just kind of the way it captured like a certain type of person and like and we know it like growing up in a small town like the guys who are small town white guys who desperately want to be gangsters. You know what's funny? We're not going to say the name of the person, but we both know who we are talking about right now. Yeah. He's tall and lanky. Yeah, so <laughs> just, I mean, I thought the way that he he played that character was, was pretty perfect. And, yeah. And Gucci Mane makes an appearance in that movie. Uh, so 
Okay, is that the dude at the end the that like the gangsta big yeah, high roller? Yeah. Did you ever hear the behind the scenes stuff that he was literally passed out during a lot of those scenes because he smoked so much weed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was listening no. to some behind the scenes stuff that it <laughs> some of those scenes took so long to film because he was so fucking high on no, that set. But that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> um, so yeah, that one, that one is another one that I would I would say. Okay, so we're talking about movies that like don't get a get, kind of get a bad it, rap. It's almost like you know, just some of those movies that, that just you know, critically not great, mm-hmm. maybe a bad rap. That you're just like, I love that movie. Yeah, I don't know because for for me, oh, I can think of one. For me, it's I uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I have okay. no idea why. It's based on a comic series. Blah blah blah. I mean, that's that's notoriously known as the movie that made Sean Connery leave Hollywood because that's his very last film. Really? Um, it was, looking at it, it's a train wreck, but I watched it at the perfect time. It was mm-hmm. on FX every single month. I watched it all the time. Okay, I got a movie from the 90s, which a couple of big name actors who are, you know, very well regarded, very well loved in Hollywood. But this movie is pretty much widely regarded as a complete train wreck and i'm talking about 1997's the devil's advocate starring keanu reeves and al pacino as the devil i love that movie that is i've a, never seen it. okay you need to watch that I've sometime heard it. like i i know like later career pacino like you know how he kind of has this, yeah yeah hey. she's got a great ass <laughs> you know that that kind of pacino uh <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry uh, yeah yeah you know exactly yes, what i'm talking about yes. like, you've seen heat obviously yes. so you know what i'm talking about but but that pacino like you it's that pacino to the max and he's you know playing the devil and yeah. john milton yeah which is an allusion to the uh paradise lost poem okay but so he's playing the devil and keanu is this young hotshot lawyer who gets recruited to new york city and uh, Charlie Theron is his wife, also another. Yeah, so I mean, you talk about big Ooh. star power for a movie like that is yeah. one. Um, I feel like that just slipped through the cracks. Well, I, I mean, again, since I didn't go get into this until later, I'm still trying to catch up on stuff. But that too. performance, man, is it, the Al Pacino performance is just it's insane. Is it like, ridiculous? It's bad shit. Yeah, just you, like over the top. Or oh just yeah, like, what? absolutely over the top. You got to watch it when you get a chance. I mean, it is just. One of the craziest film performances I think I've ever seen, and I, I definitely see where people didn't like the movie. Like, yeah. it, it's definitely one of those movies where it could certainly alienate a lot of people. But I don't know. I just think Pacino is hilarious, and the premise is hilarious, and it's just it's so over the top that like it kind of works in a campy way. Okay, that brings me to another one I just thought of. Yeah. A movie that a lot of people hated. I think got a terrible Rotten Tomato score. The Emoji Movie. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> well, you know, you I You had to see that. Probably. I have seen that movie yeah. because uh, you know, I have a, a stepdaughter and yes. uh, so I've seen that movie. Okay, uh, anyways, sorry. Multiple go times. back, go back. But anyways, another movie because it's Halloween and we're talking uh, you know, horror and those sorts of things, of vampires and stuff. Uh Van Helsing. I think that movie is the one with uh, with Hugh Jackman. Yes, I think that movie's awesome. Yes, thank you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, I was. I don't know who I was talking to. Critically, Pain. everyone everyone says complete train wreck. Bashed. Rack. Yeah. Honestly, Smashed. Honestly, I like that movie. Yeah. It is. It, 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 it's so it, nonstop the, action. Like it, it and the, literally and the just lore, never stops. The lore that they put yeah. in there is so weird because he's like this ridiculous guy, but he has like this high tech like yeah. chainsaw blade fist things and yeah. stuff like that's what gets me is this weird fantasy mixed with technology that like will never exist i'm so glad you brought yeah. that movie up because that movie is redonkulous <laughs> but in movie. the best way possible yeah. because if you break that down it makes no sense at no all. it's it's a totally ridiculous movie and isn't kate beckinsale in it yes. too so that's just a bonus i mean which which is yeah. almost this weird thing because she's, all time movie babe. Yeah, right well, there. she she's also Underworld, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that that she loves doing those kind of mm-hmm. movies, I guess. But the whole like, oh, the vampire needs to hatch all these it's, these it's things. Insane. Like it doesn't but make it, any sense, no. and he has to get Frankenstein to like power his machine. Like, mm-hmm. believe me, if you break it down on a level to like uh, crack it apart, it does not make sense. But it is awesome because again, FX 
you know what? FX has the movies because <laughs> FX played that shit all the time, and I watched it all the time. Uh, that was that was. I'm one. so glad you brought yeah, up Van Helsing. I, I love that movie. Have you ever seen the parody Stan Helsing? No, me I neither. Seen that, but, but someone brought that. That up was like <laughs> when it was really starting to get to the overkill of parody movies, like when disaster movie and For, epic uh, movie. Saturday the 14th. And what was the 300 parody that came out? This is uh, Meet the Spartans. Yeah, like all those. Yeah, just Meet the Parents. It was supposed god to be awful Spartans. ones. Date like, movie, epic movie, superhero yeah, movie, yeah. disaster movie. That yeah, there was a whole yeah. When all those started disaster. coming out, like that was kind of the end of the superhero movie that or the the, the parody the film. parody movie. Well, I mean, we touched this, we touched on this in the parody episode, but I think it's the thing has moved too fast now. Like literally, oh, yeah. literally on Twitter, someone's gonna be either roasted or someone's mm-hmm. gonna be really funny. Two days later, it's gone. It doesn't. Has there exist. been like a, a superhero parody movie? Like, has anybody made a, a parody of like DC and Marvel I mean, or any of that? Uh, there's a really bad one, and I was supposed to watch it like two months ago. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's with the same. It, it's like has wrestlers in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it vamp a little bit and I'll try to find it. Okay. Dude, I, we're I gonna, we're we're going to cut it right there because we couldn't find the movie we were talking no. about, but uh I don't know. We're we're close. To, we're getting close to hour. Yeah, we want to keep going. Sure, we can go like right what, around what hour you, and ten hour. 15. What do you what do you want to what do you want to talk about now? Um, I mean, one of the things that we discussed a little bit when we were talking earlier is like the whole controversy about like Scorsese and Coppola and like the shit they're saying about Marvel <laughs> movies. And like, I don't know, it's I'm, not cinema. I, I, well, first of all, like even as somebody who definitely prefers their movies to like the current, you know, Marvel. You're you're and definitely DC like I said when we were talking earlier about your. It's, I guess the the genre mm-hmm. and the type of film you like, you're definitely not in the whole twenty two mm-hmm. MCU movies, DCU movies. You're not into that. Although since you recommended it, I think I'm gonna go back and watch Winter Soldier because I know Red. Personally, I think that's my the best and that's yeah. my favorite. I think Red Redford's in it and it kind of has like the political espionage yeah. type of plot to it. Yeah, which that's another subgenre of movies that I really like too. I don't know if, how many of them you've seen. I'm trying to think, like, like what, like what, what falls into that? Oh well, uh, well. Speaking of Redford, you know, obviously he was in All the President's Men. He Never was in, him. he was in uh, Three Days of the Condor. Uh, he was in. Is that the Flight of the Concord song? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no, that's a different movie with Faye Dunaway that he's in, and that's a really good movie too. Um, you know so much more than I fucking know about movies. I just watch old movies. That's my yeah. thing. Like, if you wanted to talk to me about, like, Book Smart or, you know, Jexy or... <laughs> Jexy Top Movie of the Year. Yeah, or, like, I don't know, what else has come out in the last year? Like, I wouldn't know shit. Yeah. Like, I would be like, uh, you're, you're more... You're almost not starting back at the back end. Yeah, it's because up. it's yeah. like... Well, you're not seeing every piece of junk <laughs> yeah, that comes exactly. out. exactly. That's what I've said. Yeah. That's what I said to you. It's like, if I did that, like, I... You'd would hate go, yourself. I would, yeah, I would You'd hate it. Hate like, I, if I went to every bad movie that came out... Like, I just wouldn't like it. You know, I would get bored of I mean, it. sometimes you gotta appreciate the good. But no, there's definitely, like, I, I don't know, you probably heard about this, but, like, my last two years in college, like, we kind of developed this joke routine of watching Grown Ups all the time. Uh, yeah, you, which is so funny, because... Were you ever in I- Iowa City when we did that? No. Okay. But you guys ironically watched it. I know someone in this house that loves both of those movies and it's not one of us <laughs> yes he loves them uh, talking about my brother uh, he loves grown-ups t-buck number one <laughs> uh yeah but so like we had this tradition of ironically was it just like a grown-ups. stupid like it was just one of those where like we had Mediacom, and it was, you know, like, there was, before everyone had every streaming service, there was, like, a list of on-demand movies yeah. you could watch, and Grown Ups was one of them. Did you guys rent it? No, no, oh, it was okay. on the, it was oh, on the okay. list of on-demand movies, so, because there's oh, a certain number of, okay, Fargo yeah, yeah, yeah. was another one that okay, we watched okay, a ton, okay, okay. because, it was ready to watch, it yeah. wasn't, like, pay-per-view mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Fargo was another one that we randomly watched a ton, because it was on video on demand. Really? Yeah, so, uh, but, yeah, we started watching Grown Ups, and, like, I don't know, there's just something so funny about that movie because, like, it's clearly just four guys who are all successful on their own, and then they're like, well, we're friends, like, let's get together and make a movie, and literally no one wrote a script before. I think the entire thing was improv. Like, I literally think it's just them on a weekend or two, and just like, yeah. hey, film whatever, yeah. and we'll piece it together. Just just literally do anything. And I think that that's why people like it, is because it's like, oh, it's just a bunch of friends hanging out. Yeah. 
my 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 resident or like my thesis theory on Adam Sandler is that every movie where he plays a loser is awesome, and every movie where he plays a cool guy who gets all the ladies and you know everyone wants to be his friend and everyone wants to hang out with him sucks. Okay. Do you actually? I'm not gonna lie. That kind of checks off. I think that I think that theory checks out. There might be a few that fall in this weird middle ground. Murder mystery kind of did because like at first it seemed like he was a cool guy and then he told his wife later on that like actually I'm a loser and I'm yeah. about to get fired yeah. from my job. Yeah. And, Which surprisingly that was just like a fun dumb it like. Wasn't that bad? No, I'm not saying it was bad. It was just like a Friday night mm-hmm. date night movie. Yeah. So so my yeah my thesis on Sandler is whenever he's a cool guy it sucks and whenever he's a loser it's awesome. And in Grown Ups, he is very much the cool big shot guy who has, you know, gone to, I don't even know what he has, if he's an actor or a producer, he's some, some sort of entertainment guy. And then he comes back to his hometown and, you know, all of his old rivals want to yuck it up with him. Steve Buscemi is his, that's is why, his hey, main Rob, nemesis in Rob, the movie. As you know, that's why I don't go back home. Yeah, yeah. Because I know that Steve Buscemi is Steve waiting Buscemi there for Steve Buscemi will be waiting there for you. <laughs> and Shaq. And, yes. Uh, Dan Patrick and just a ton of others. Wasn't Rob Riggle in it? Yeah. Or I think, am I... Uh, no, I'm thinking of Colin Quinn. Yeah, Colin yeah, Quinn. Colin, Colin, no, actually, Colin Quinn is the main enemy in the movie. Okay. okay. And then Buscemi yeah. is on Colin Quinn's yeah, team. Yeah, So, yeah, those two. But I don't Isn't know. Isn't the ladies' man on the other side, too? Oh, dude, that Dude, the ladies' man? That, that was one that That's we, one movie that was always on Comedy Central that we'd watch at your place. Mm-hmm. I quote the... So the fish sandwich line, oh, yeah. like, all the time. That's one that everyone, like, that got terrible hey, reviews. Hey, sweet thing, can I buy you a fish sandwich? Like, literally, <laughs> well, I say that every day. Yeah, that's one that gets terrible <laughs> reviews, but I love it, too. Smiling ass? Yeah. <laughs> Smiling like, ass or whatever. Tim Meadows doesn't get enough credit, man. He's no. hilarious. Like, Dude, uh... In Mean Girls, uh, he's mean hilarious. Mean Girls, but, uh... Oh, God. Uh, Popstar. Did you ever see Popstar? I've seen parts of oh it. Oh my god! Is it, is it worth Pop watching? Popstar, yes. Watch it because I not love o- Dewey not, Cox. So not only is are the lonely I- the lo- lonely island songs mm-hmm. amazing, but they perfectly parody like a behind the scenes like Rise of a Star MTV movie. Because and the thing is, it sucks because no one saw that movie. Like I don't know if they could have like yeah, ch- changed the that marketing. So I don't know. I remember I went to it with T Buck on like three weeks after it came out on a Tuesday cheap night, and we were howling at how funny it was. And the two SoCo buddies and a bunch of other people I've talked to love it. Like Jill and her boyfriend, they love that okay. film. I'm gonna watch like that definitely one. watch Pop Star. Like I mean, it's like we've said. There, I just I don't feel like there have been a lot of great comedies in the, I, in the last. I would dec- you know what? Last decade. going back, I would say that that that's probably up there mm-hmm. as one of the best ones yeah okay that sounds like something i'm gonna need to check out at some point yeah anytime it's like sort of a parody of anything you know like obviously we talked about scary movies but like you know walk hard was like a parody of uh walk the line and you know the whole bio yeah. music biopic yep. and you know obviously like blazing saddles was a parody of the western and like just kind of movies like that that really was blades of glory a parody no, that was just really. a straight up comedy. I think it was just a comedy. Yeah, I don't think it was riffing on anything specific. I think it was just like, what if we made Will Ferrell and John Heater figure skaters? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know that was when Will Ferrell was kind of a, like could do no wrong too. So he yeah. was still kind of at his apex there, and he's not. I mean, he hasn't really made a great, a great Will movie Ferrell in a while. Yeah. Uh he was in. Did you watch the In Between Two Ferns? Oh yeah, he's a watch. bit role. Yeah, he's um, okay. That movie was weird. Yeah, like I never, I never watched any of the Between the Ferns, uh, mm-hmm. actual like shorts or shows mm-hmm. or whatever. But the film, it has its moments. There's sometimes I was like laughing pretty hard, but other times, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I would agree that. And Will Ferrell is another one who like we talk about like our teenage years and like our f- kind of forming our sense of comedy. I feel like he he had a big role in that. Strictly like. SNL. Yeah, I feel like SNL, SNL because I remember going over your place. You had the two uh, had best DVD, of yeah. two best of DVDs, and like there's the cowbell, there's that hot tub one, yeah. there's the celebrity Jeopardy, the cheerleader, cheerleader, like Robert yeah. Goulet. <laughs> I still do that one sometimes. The, oh God, there's one other one I was thinking of uh, where he does the song with Garth Brooks. Yeah. Mondays, yes, Mondays, yes, they make me so, so steamed. Weekends, weekends. for the weekends. weekends. 
<laughs> yeah, like there. Yeah, that was. I mean, I'm sure if I would have grown up 20 or 30 years earlier, like I would have said, like you know, Chevy Chase and all them were like yeah. the golden era of of SNL and yeah. and Belushi and all them. But but you know, growing up when I did, like that was the best I remember SNL did, being. Did you ever? I don't know the name of the title, which I'm gonna be pissed off about it. But did you ever watch the? documentary about the behind the scenes of the national lampoon and how it got started and basically all those guys all of those guys were the first crew of Mm -hmm. snl members it sounded bonkers yeah like the drugs i mean just all the women i have a feeling if anybody else like spent a day with john belushi like they would have been dead by the end of it i mean the fact that he even lived as long as he did is is that pretty remarkable i mean that and that's the bad thing is like once you get so much fame like that, yeah, you're I mean, gonna. Unfortunately, you got to be tamed somehow. There, there, there's definitely the potential for some major self destruction, and obviously he's kind of one of the most notorious yeah. examples. Well, of I mean, that. He, he stands out. I mean, everyone that's ever seen Animal House is like, boom, yeah. he, that's that's the guy. I mean, Animal House and Blues Brothers, like, I, I mean, t- he like he at that time he was comedy, you know, like he mm-hmm. he was. He was the king of the genre. Well, like, it's it's almost weird too because like I'm not gonna like stereotype that 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 person that he was, mm-hmm. but it's always kind of the like high energy, a little bit overweight person because again, yeah, uh, and Farley in the 90s, was kind Farley. of like, well, and and a lot of people say that like Farley was basically the second coming of Belushi. Yeah, that, like you know that he who who is it now, Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> I mean, she's not bad, dude. I'm sorry, but I can't. She, I never but saw the, not. I never saw that like a drama one. Uh, Will you ever forgive me? I never mm-hmm. saw that one. It I heard that. that it, okay, I would. She falls very, down a lot. It's very meh. That's the thing. Is she falls down a lot. Honestly, like, I mean, obviously, in terms of just like stand up, I think you know probably Chappelle is like the guy that everyone will remember from this generation. I mean, it's hard to go with anyone else besides him, but like. In terms of acting, like I don't know, I, 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 and we we were talking about him earlier, but like Adam Devine, I think is probably one of the funniest people that actually acts in comedy movies right now. Like, and he was in the Righteous will, Gemstones too. I see. I haven't watched that, so that might change my opinion on him. But I think that he's very much pigeonholed into a character. Yeah, I feel like he does any movie that he's been in. Um, from, uh, I guess isn't a, is isn't it romantic was a little bit different. I haven't seen that. I, I surprisingly I really like that movie, but uh, Jexy to Mike and Dave. Mm-hmm. Even though I love Mike and Dave was Mike maybe Dave the funniest hilarious. movie of that year. Um, yeah, that's like one of the few comedies from the last four, three or four years that I think kind of harkens back to like that two thousand three oh to two thousand seven era. I don't. We I have about. no idea why. But like that line where they're on the beach and he's talking about the push pop. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I was gonna say I that. was in the theater and I was literally the push pop crying. Is, is so funny. And and I guarantee that that was not in the script at all. He just they just rifted and improv that scene. I don't know why, but too, but the other one, the other line that like sticks with me, which is I don't know why it's so funny to me, is when Adam Devine is like talking to uh, Aubrey Plaza and he's like, you know. You're just like uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in Scarface, and you didn't even say hello to my little friend. <laughs> <laughs> Which that that line to me was hilarious. That that whole movie, I no one. The thing is, no one probably even saw that movie. Um, no, I don't. It had this weird, like almost thing specialness to it because it was based on a true story, but they didn't even lean into that. Yeah. They were just like, we're going to make it our own. And it's ridiculous because even they joke, they go uh, four-wheeling and uh, – or ATV uh, – mm-hmm. atv in We kind of call that? Yeah. Um, yeah but whatever. they're like doing the Jurassic Park and they play like the dra- yeah. uh, f- pseudo mm-hmm. Jurassic Park theme. But then when they're f- like going off the ramp, they're that uh, the one yeah, black they're... dude is says some hilarious – and then she just gets smacked in the face. Yeah, like that part is. There's there's so many things in there. I need to. You know, what, one, I might go rewatch. Yeah, that. another one I was thinking of who actually has some potential to be a pretty funny comedic actor is uh, Jake Johnson. Uh, you know, like oh, from, from from New Girl. Girl and uh, he, he was, was Spider Man. Yeah, he was in Spider Man. Tag. I think he's pretty funny. I think he's got a ch- like. He, there's something about like he, his, his sort of slacker ethos that he has that. It kind of works, and he's he's a pretty funny. The dude. thing is, though, recently I don't think he's. I mean, he was in Jurassic World. That was a very small role. Actually, but that the guy was... that plays Schmidt in, in New Girl is really funny, too. Yeah. Uh, he, he does TV right now, though. Yeah, but he, he's funny, too. Yeah. Like, and all those, actually, all those people are funny. Like, the guy, Winston, he's funny. Yep. Um, so that show is funny. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> I like how you're just like, 
I like New Girl. Yeah, yeah no, I New do Girl's, like. I know. I, I mean, I, Kelly watches it all the time. Yeah, so I, I, New I Girl like is show. very funny. Believe me, it, mm-hmm. there's always an. Hey, what's your origin story of New Girl? Well, some girl I was with started watching it's a funny it, and show. then I fell into it. Yeah, yeah. no, it's undoubtedly um, it's a funny show. Like, no, I absolutely agree. Jake Johnson is yeah, very much that slacker yeah, persona. He's got like potential. he's witty. He has good line mm-hmm. delivery and everything like that. But yeah, thinking outside of the box, like comedic actor. I mean, I guess Kevin Hart is probably like the one that's like the but he, the I, top I, of the pile right now. I mean, now, but. I would say he's almost like hit or miss because mm-hmm. he did those ride along movies. I thought they were bad. Yeah. Did Jumanji? Thought he was really good. Yeah, I think him and The Rock like they have a good chemistry. They do. Like they there's play, something about those well. two playing off each other that works. Did so. you see the newer Jumanji? Yeah, I did. Are you excited for the new one? I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll probably The next see level, it. man. Oh, it's the I next level. Are they both in it again? Jumanji, the next level. Are they both in it again? Yeah. Okay. But, spoiler, those it's two. in the Traver trailer. I think the different, you know how there's different personas that went into those people? Mm-hmm. They get all mixed up again. Okay. So, The Rock is a different person. The Kevin Hart's a different person. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, those two have good chemistry. Yeah. I mean, they, they have something that just works with them. So, maybe if they do every movie together from here on out, then... Did you see Hobbs and Shaw? No. Okay, I won't say anything. Uh, bad. No, Kevin Hart's in it. Oh, he is? Okay. Well. And it might be... Uh, it's a cameo, but obviously The Rock is in it, Kevin Hart. I think that, like you said, they're they're slowly realizing that they work really well together, so they're going to put each other in the movies. Oh, that just reminded me. Another movie that kind of got critically panned when it came out and didn't do a lot of business at the box office, but I just recently watched, and I think actually in a weird way is really good. <laughs> is the uh, in a weird way I think it's good yeah is the uh, Michael Mann Miami Vice movie with Jamie Foxx and Colin Farrell never saw it what is that 2008 it's like it's so weird because it's just such like a Do they, don't they take it super serious though yeah but it's it's like super serious it's like super experimental like yeah. it, uh, literally the beginning of the movie they just there's no introduction they just like basically cut into the action and you feel like there was already a movie going on and they don't really explain anything to you yeah but it's just like it's That's the, how I want a movie. It's the ultimate vibes movie is how I would describe yeah. it. Like, you, I don't know. I mean, Michael Mann, you know, he directed Heat. He directed yeah. Thief, Manhunter. Like, all these, like, cool crime movies where, you know, like, criminals and cops, like, they kind of blur the line. They're doing their thing. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, it's kind of about this symbiotic relationship between them. And it's, it's very much in that same vein. But there's just, like, you know, it's all in Miami. Then they, then they go to Columbia. They go to... Havana, like they go to all these cool places and they just show like aerial shots of like speedboats and shit. <laughs> kind of like, I mean, his other, well, Collateral is another one that he yeah, did. Yeah. And just kind of, he's just so good at those aerial shots and the visuals and stuff that it's like, it's not a perfect movie. Like, there's definitely flaws and. But it has that certain something, something just, that just like just, grabs you. There's just vibes that like, <laughs> You're like, damn, like this I lo- is cool. I've never heard that, but I love it. It just has vibes, man. Dude, it's got vibes. I will I like make that. a list of just vibes. Vibes movies. movies. Yeah. yeah, top five vibes movies. That, uh, Miami Vice is right up there. It's yeah. it's like, it's off the wall. So it's that, weird. That's kind of surprising because that's one of the movies, I again, I missed out on it because I always thought that I think other people had said that it was bad. And it that's the thing is like, oh yeah, critical or not, well not cri- maybe critically and box office wise, yeah. it didn't do well. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's one of those things I need to go back and everyone, every movie that people said, no, I need to just watch. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You watch a movie and you don't like it. You know? Well, Rob, I don't think you understand. I have a lot of juxies to watch. That's true. You go to every <laughs> new movie, so you're subjected to a lot of God, the... Uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm excited to see of kind of barrel. like like the lighthouse and stuff like that. But let's let's wrap this up. Finishing to the end of the year, because this is going to post like probably the first week of November. Mm-hmm. From November to December, because that's, about, that's where awards cut off, every, obviously, at the end of the year. What are like your movies that you're definitely looking forward to. Obviously, I'm going to say, take this one right out of your mouth, Irishman. Yes. You're looking uh, forward to that. I, I have am. not seen the trailer for it. I have not seen any promotional stuff. Okay. I want to go into this, like, just clean. Okay, yeah. I mean, that one, I think, is going to be very good. I, yeah. I mean, I've read some of... I, I've made this... I've committed the sin of reading a few of the reviews, <gasps> but people... It seems to be going over really well. Yeah. Um, so that one, definitely. Uh, like I, I told you earlier... I still haven't streamed Midsummer yet, but I'm planning on doing that soon. You should definitely. I I would say, 
if you liked Hereditary, mm-hmm. you will love Midsummer. Um, and and the thing is that the one that streams might be the director's cut yeah. because he added some stuff which might actually connect some things that I had a problem with. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uncut Gems, obviously, that's yeah. one I really want to see. I just watched Good Time a few months ago. What did you think of that? I liked it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think it was a perfect or like it's gritty, classic. But it's like yeah, raw. it's gritty. I mean, it it has that sort of Scorsese, it's like ru- it's like run all night. Yeah. Like that's what I think I compare yeah. it to. Is just like it's a man doing his it's thing. It's grimy and it's like the underworld of New York and all that. I mean, it's kind of and and it shows that Pattinson has a different side to him because he's done a few indie movies like uh, Rover. Rover, uh, Cosmopolis with uh, David Cronenberg. He did that movie, which was a weird movie, but sounds weird. Interesting. Well, the thing is, he definitely he is the almost the gold standard to be like. I was pigeonholed as mm-hmm. this cliched, or I wouldn't say cliched, but like this this I was, role I that was Edward Cullen. I was Edward Cullen. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, fuck that. And mm-hmm. he's literally doing yeah. all of this stuff to stand out. And again, like I mentioned, The Lighthouse, I'm going to see that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm I've very, heard good things very about excited. That. So that's one I want to see at some point. Um, other than that, uh, is there any others I really want to see? I mean, I, I don't know how to feel about Knives Out. I think it's pretty probably going to be good. I I I I'm seeing that a couple weeks early. Uh-huh. A couple weeks early. I love a good mystery. Uh-huh. Did you ever see Brick? No, that's been on my queue for a while though. Brick was one that I remember I listened to a podcast, they suggested it, I watched it and I was like I really dug this cuz it was like a Cuz it's LA it was, noir, right? It, it's yeah. like that but like in a high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I loved that and I hope that that is sort of the the concept of this knives yeah. out is I love a movie that I am from second one to the very last minute. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing what the fuck is going on, yeah. and but you have to execute it in a very well. Great and way. another movie that I t- think I told you I really liked that didn't get a lot of attention was that Under the Silver Lake that came out earlier this year. You know Andrew what? Garfield. That movie was on my most anticipated of. 2017 i think mm-hmm. or 2018 and i just skipped out it yeah. never it never showed here it, w- it went straight to vod for us it's kind of like it's kind of like that it's that same sort of la mystery kind of weird underground does stuff. it end in a satisfying manner or no yeah i'd say okay. so okay. and uh and and it's the same guy who directed it follows uh david Robert okay. mitchell so okay. um so that's that'd be you know basically the main ones i would say are uncut gems and the irishman though Knives Out, I'm hoping it's good. I don't know if I'll see it right yeah. away, but I want to see it. Eventually. You're saying you do, you're not excited for Charlie's Angels? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Charlie's Angels. They have, a girls night, out, they have a girls' night screening on Wednesday. Yeah, I totally go forgot about away. that. Is there any other ones that... Well, I mean, that Ford v. Ferrari movie looks all right. That, I'm, I'm in on it because of Christian Bale mm-hmm. and Matt Damon, yeah. but I'm not big into... I don't know cars. Or I, whatever. Yeah, I don't think a, that that's going to be the main aspect of it. I mean, I liked Rush from 2000. Twelve, I believe. Yeah, um, that was a really good movie. Um, yeah, yeah, probably. I would say all of those. Jojo Rabbit. Is it good? Have you uh, seen it? it? It's supposed to be wide next week. Okay. Actually, by the time this posts, I should have a review up. But Jojo Rabbit, I'm very excited because I'm a big fan of Taika Waititi. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like Into or Into the Shadows, oh, uh, Thor Three, or Thor Ragnarok. Like I've heard, that's one of the best. Uh, MCU movies too. It's, so I it's one of the one the funniest, okay. most like enjoyable time mm-hmm. because he's in it and mm-hmm. he he's very much got this uh, New Zealand esque mm-hmm. humor. But Jojo Rabbit is one of mine that I'm looking forward to. But all of the others you said, and then I mean critically like box office, it's gonna make a lot of money. But awards wise, probably not. Uh, Star Wars. I'm a big nerd. Oh, yeah. I like Star Wars. I, I know need that, to go back. I know and... that you're not into that. And see, oh, no, I've is, never watched any of the Star Wars. And movies. and see, that's the thing is it's like. Just, like I, huge franchises like that with a million movies it's just hard for me because i'm like i think it's funny because you're maybe one of actually there's probably a lot of people that have never seen them but like it's it's tough not to have seen one because yeah. your parents never probably showed you no when i was growing up my parents rented those like every weekend yeah yeah and i, I mean my like i said my parents weren't like into sci-fi at all they read a that. book so which I think yeah. reading is cool too. I, I can't I read. No, I, I have nothing against that. Yeah, but no, uh, no. I, I I think eventually I will just sit down and watch the Star Wars movies. But it's just it's daunting when there's like ten movies. Yeah. Or, well, I mean, there's gonna be a Disney yeah. Plus in two weeks. Yeah, They're I starting know. a series and whatnot. Any Believe franchise me, can, like that with that many movies, it's like man, 
Because I like it like a trilogy is always good. Like, like Lord good, of the Rings. Like, I was, I was yeah. just going to say Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Honestly, those original. First one, not a big fan of. Two and three. Great. Awesome. Return of the King. Classic. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I would say probably for the end of the year, I'd have to look at the calendar to see what else comes out. But those are probably the you know five movies that I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to. Because I love a good kind of smaller, like you said, uncut gems. I'm very much mm-hmm. looking forward to that. Um, I think that one's gonna because that's well. by that's from the Zafi brothers. Isn't yeah, it? I think that one's gonna do well at the box office. I think people are. I think hopefully, it's gonna. Hopefully, I think it, people are gonna come out to see it because of Sandler. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyways, yeah, well, we're closing up the way. It's been a great discussion. Yeah, we've I was gonna say we've we've covered a, the thing is we could have we could literally do this for like three hours, and I hope hope to get you back on this for like multiple more episodes because this like yeah, you all of the knowledge i don't know you're picking up and yeah that's I mean, why we should maybe just start uh like I you just, know maybe you should like quit your job yeah or we can just, just do like a daily talk show or talk, something yeah but rob thank you for uh joining me on this episode seven this was yeah. awesome um do you have anything to like pimp out do you have anything no, last final thoughts not really do you have anything um just Subscribe yeah, to my channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, I, well, actually, okay, I will say something. Yeah, what's up? Like, you know, Jared is obviously doing something that's a little bit what we would say off the beaten path. Uh, it's not status, not yeah, not the I mean, standard. It, when you grow up in a small town like we did, and you get out of school, like it, it's something. It's weird when you see like, oh, one of my classmates is doing movie reviews on YouTube. But I just hope that people will kind of understand it for one, and hopefully, eventually support you uh, because. You know, if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? You yeah, know? And, yeah. And obviously you were born to be a creative person and to do, you know. Or drugs, to, one of the two. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, to, I'm going into the yeah. first one. To not sit in an office and, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you're just, you know, you're kind of like the character in office space. Like, you, you know, Ron Livingston. You're not, you're not, cut, you, you just don't. That's not you. So Th- That's very much the best compliment I've gotten yeah. in a long time. So hopefully time. people will support you because, you know. You're doing a lot of good work. Yeah. You obviously care a lot about it, and you do a good job. You do well, a great job. Rob, so. thank you so much. And, I mean, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm kind of speechless. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. But, no, definitely got to get you more on this because this sure. was a, like, honestly, we're at, like, an hour and 20. Oh, this shit. This flew by yeah, in no I time. Did. But, anyways, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, this was episode, I think I want to say seven. I'm yeah, supposed to record another right. one. So, yeah, episode seven. Thank you guys, and we'll see you guys next time.